Hi, this is Chris Hoy, and I want to thank you for joining me today for this acrylic painting tutorial. I am going to be showing you how to paint this adorable Uncle Sam step by step from start to finish. So let's get started. <music> I am starting out with an MDF surface and going to be applying multi-purpose sealer. This is a great product that will ensure that anything that you create will not chip, peel, or flake off. I am using my inch and a half square wash. Such a nice size and I'm painting from the inside out. That way I don't get any rolls down over the edge. Just want to give it a quick coat and kind of nice. You can see what's been painted because it does turn just a little different shade. I did not add any water to the product, but my brush was a little bit moist. If it's not flowing on smoothly or if you find that you have ridges, while you're applying the product, just pick up a little bit of water on your brush. That'll be enough moisture to really make it flow on smoothly. Just giving it a quick dry. And I don't have a very thick coat, so it's going to not take very long for this to dry using my heat it tool. Awesome little dryer. I am going to next base coat this with light buttermilk. Same brush and I'm just again starting from the center flowing out to the edges and that will make sure that nothing will go over the edge. But after I put the paint on I always go in the direction of the surface and that way my brush strokes are going the same way that my surface also is. And I'm just going to go ahead and put two coats of paint on here and give it a quick dry in between each coat so that I get it on nice and smooth and even and have a nice opaque coverage. Actually, because I'm putting this light color on dark and I'm not using heavy coverage, I'll go ahead and do three, three coats of paint on it. I am using tomato red and a three quarter inch flat wash. And the reason I'm going with this size brush is it's pretty much the same size as the stripes. I can just start and kind of pull it up. You see how it drags. I just need a little more moisture in my brush. Starting just a little bit below the hat band. Just going to put on a nice, smooth, even coat of paint. Just going to brush it out until it's even. And I don't see any light or dark areas. Red's kind of hard to cover. Just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Because I have that light buttermilk base, if I take my time uh, spreading the paint on, I probably won't have to do two coats. And I could use tape to edge off the sides of the stripes, but this brush is so nice. 
that if I'm just careful on how I apply it, it'll be fine. Look at these little. Sometimes when your paint's a little older, you get those little clumps in there. Just lift them off and smooth it out. I don't use this color very often. I'm pretty sure that paint has been around for a while. dry and then I'll put a quick second coat on it just to make it smooth. Sharpen up my edges. I think it's time for a new bottle of paint. up just a little bit of light cinnamon and my half inch angle I need to add just a little shading across the bottom of the light buttermilk stripes and we'll just get down the side I don't want to make this too strong just a very light bit of shading. And I think I'll just tone that down a little bit more. I want my stripes to still be um, more white than they are brown. It can be real easy to let this become a little bit too put a little bit down that side too. Going with a little bit of deep burgundy. And I'll do the same thing with the deep burgundy on the red stripes just to give a little more richness on those. With the deep burgundy, I can be a little more heavy handed with the shading because I want that nice rich color. And just across the bottom and up that left side. I guess it's the right side.
What a huge difference, yes. I wanted to make the hat band blue, but I don't want it a solid blue, so I'm gonna base coat it first with Williamsburg blue. And I can use this to clean up that edge. Let your brush make that nice sharp line. And also You could use tape to straighten these, to keep these edges straight. But I do believe the brush is a little quicker. Let this dry and we'll just pop another layer on that too. When you use a larger brush, you're going to have a smoother finish, less brush strokes, and your lines will be a lot straighter and sharper. waiting for that to dry I'm going to base coat the face area with warm beige you can use a filbert or a flat or whatever brush you're most comfortable with the bigger the better but you still want to have good control Make sure that paint slides on there nice and smooth. If you get a nice first base coat on, the next base coats will be easier to cover. And whenever you put a light color on, it's gonna take a couple coats with, two or three coats to get a nice even coverage. Don't want to try to get this on super heavy. Wow, that is drying. I'm going to put another coat of light buttermilk on the brim. Just looks like it needs a little more solidness. And we'll go back to the hat band and make that a little bit darker. I'm going with uh, Deep Midnight Blue. This 
so I'm working with some new equipment and had a little problem with audio so I had to switch things around so I apologize if there's any problems with the sound volume um, working with the hat band I did switch to pick up a little bit of deep midnight blue with my half inch angle shading down the sides and across the bottom of the hat band to deepen it because we want to strengthen it to have that rich patriotic blue that everyone loves a little bit across the top and that allows the middle area to be just slightly lighter it just gives more interest when you have a little bit of a glow there and i do work with very loose paint which means i have a lot of water in it so I can work with it for quite a while before it actually begins to set up. Switched over to light cinnamon. Kind of the same concept. I'm going to shade down the sides and across the bottom. This is very, very thin because I want to maintain that bright, brighter white uh, light buttermilk background. This is just to give it a little bit of richness and volume and I am using a larger brush I'm using the three-quarter inch angle uh, just to allow for fewer strokes smoother application I like a bigger brush I just want to make sure that I don't pull too much brown in but you do want to balance it with the same amount of brown light cinnamon that you shaded on the stripes so they should have a very similar um, tone and we're pulling a lot of brown in the beard as well so it, it will all balance out I know it looks a little bit lopsided right now but I think that adding this little tint of color just makes such a huge difference that's my old motto a little bit of paint makes a big difference so I'm just continuing to smooth it out I, I am using a bigger brush, which I think makes it so much easier than trying to work with a very small brush. Have a wider float. Camera washes out some of the intensity just a little bit, but it it's a very nice soft float. And pulling a little bit across the top doesn't look like much. You don't need much. Just that little bit of color to make make that much difference on there. I did add a second coat on the face and now I'm going in with my half inch angle and dried clay. There's going to be a shadow be below the hat brim and a, just a little bit down the sides of the face. Keep this tight against that hat brim so that you don't have a separation or a gap of colors. wanted to float the cheeks I made a mix uh, about a 50 50 mix of dried clay and tomato red reds too red and the dried clay is too brown so if you just do a 50 50 mix it makes a really nice color I used my three quarter inch angle and I probably should have went with a half inch um, it, it was a little bit awkward but I was determined to make it work so I just worked with the paint quite a bit just to make sure it's smoothed out. If you do need to go in with a mop brush to smooth it out, by all means, use a mop. I like his cheeks a little more rosy. I think that makes it fun. I did use a stencil for the nose, and I like a, a big old nose. I think it's very whimsical, so I went with a bigger nose. You could adjust the nose down if you don't like it that big, but I thought it looked really cute. And I am going in with my number five spectacular stencil brush. Load the brush well, wipe it over a paper towel to remove excess, and I'm not swirling it, I'm tapping it. When you tap it, you get a little heavier coverage, and we definitely want an opaque nose. <coughs> Excuse me. It was a little off center. You can see I shifted the stencil down to make it not lopsided and because I'm stenciling it's going to take probably three coats to get a good coverage 
But one thing nice about a stencil, it's just so easy to go back and get that exact shape and not have to worry about um, one side being bigger than the other or not even. Just tap, 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 get that smooth coverage. It's so easy with stencils. It just makes it really nice. I did dry it and I'm going in with a little bit of light buttermilk just to highlight the top and I'm pulling it down to the middle of the nose just to brighten it. Also, it creates that separation between the face and the nose. I'm using that same 50-50 mix of tomato red and dried clay, I did bump down to my half inch angle for a little more control making the tip of the nose along the bottom and pulling it up the sides just a little bit, nice and rosy. Smooth it in. Make sure you keep those edges crisp and that center very, very soft. You can see how loose my paint is um, by the, the strokes or the, that the brush makes. I did go back in with a mop this is a half inch goat hair mop. I love those. They're really soft. Now I have just a little bit of Snow White to brighten that nose. Again, it's going to increase that separation between the nose and the face. Give a little more dimension. And blend it in. Loaded my Epic Script Liner with Snow White to pull a strong highlight over there and add, add a couple dots. Make sure that's dry before you go to the star stencil. And this is a one inch stencil. So much easier than painting a star. And this is a stencil you can tell I use over and over and over. It does have a cutout where the number one is and that stands for a one inch. I did cover that up because it's kind of hard to uh, miss that when you're stenciling and you'll end up with a little tiny number one on your hat band. We manufactured these stencils and realized this was an issue. The new stencils don't have those numbers on them. Not a big deal. Just put a little piece of tape there. I did clean my stencil really well. It makes it nice for reference. You can gauge exactly where that star placement should be. If your stencil is dirty, you kind of have to wing it, and sometimes they end up um, off-center or out of alignment. Load the brush well. Wipe it over a paper towel. You want to ensure those crisp edges. And the biggest reason that stenciling fails or you have those rough blobby edges, either you use too much paint or you pound too hard. You just want to lay the paint on there with a brisk pouncing motion. You don't want to pound it in there so that it pushes it underneath the stencil. Because I used a very light layer of paint, by the time I stenciled the other two stars, that first one was dry. Going back to add a second coat, and you can see I still haven't reloaded my stencil brush. The stencil brushes have a tremendous amount of bristles. This is one I personally designed. Soft bristles. It gives you a beautiful stenciling result. Holds a ton of paint and will help make you look like a great stenciler. Getting ready to do the eyes. Now I could hand paint the eyes, but I used my painter's pal and I overlapped it with a second one so that I have an oval. It has a little tiny curve at the top, so it looks like a little droopy eyelid. Loaded my stencil brush with Payne's Gray, and you can see when I lift it how that gives that not a complete oval. Just makes it a little more whimsical having that extra little cutout. Um, then I keep my, my Painter's Pals taped together. I just flipped it over so I can mirror that eye identical on the other side. It's such a great way to add 
a shape other than a normal shape when you can combine stencils to create a new shape. And once that's on there, look at that. It's just perfect. Such a great way. Now make sure that you clean your stencil after each application because you don't want to flip it over and have wet paint on the back side when you flip it over to do the other stencil. I use Payne's Gray because it is such a more lifelike color than black. I think black is very flat. Payne's Gray just gives a little more color and the fact that we have blue in the um, hat band, it just kind of helps tie those colors together. Definitely is best to do two light coats as opposed to one heavy coat. Remember to wipe your stencil off before you flip it over to do the other side. You can match them up perfectly. And with that second coat on there, these eyes look fantastic. They are perfect. Look at that. Such a great way to add eyes very easily. The painter's pals are something I designed, came up with because I have trouble with ovals and circles and I think there's about seven or eight in the line right now. Loaded my radical round with light buttermilk and I kind of tap in the eyebrow. I want it to be a little bushy. I just don't want a straight line. And just kind of tap it in there. It gives it a little more volume and a little more bushiness to it. When I did the eyes, I the nose wasn't quite dry, so I went back to put those back in. So be careful with that. Add a few little dip dots on the cheek. I love it when they sparkle and adding these little dots really bring that sparkle in. It's always those little simple steps that make such a big difference. I loaded the toe of my quarter inch angle with a little bit of thin Snow White. And I just want to wash that across the bottom and up the right side of each eye. Kind of gives it that rounded, watery, glassy look. And my paint is very loose, so I can work with it for a little while. You don't want your eyes to become too whitish. You still need to have that blue in there for that depth. The white when it dries is going to be a lot lighter than when you first put it on but you, it's so much easier to go back and add more as it is to remove it. So I dip dotted with white, a big dot in the top left, a little one in the bottom right and then I took the small end of my stylus and put it on that dot and kind of drug it out. It gives a little comma stroke that's just kind of cute. Epic Script Liner and Thin Lamp Black to do the eyelashes. And they never turn out the same, so I'll go back and touch them up and make them look kind of equal. I do three. More than three, I think, is a little too much. I almost missed camera on this. Shade the bottom of the eyebrows with a little bit of thinned light cinnamon. Kind of pulls everything together. I'm really having trouble with the camera. Sorry about that. A little bit of dry clay underneath the eyebrows. That's going to give a little shade below there. Helps to kind of sink them in and create that eye socket look. Shade underneath the eyes. Be careful with this. Too much shading will make him look really tired. So you want just enough shading under the eyes to give that little bit of um, socket space, but not too much. And then shade around the nose helps define that separation. A little bit of highlight there on what would kind of be like the bridge of the nose. And I'm using Snow White and it's super thin, just kind of floated it on both sides. 
trying to play around to see what I want to do for the beard. And I think I'm just going to use my angle to pull lines down. And I shade it across and then pull it straight down. And that's how I created all the texture in the beard. Shade across, stay on that chisel and pull it straight down. You get some really fun lines that way. I'm going to shade down both sides of the face and create all that line work in the beard. Go back and add a little highlight with Snow White on those eyebrows using my Epic Script Liner. Get a little more detail that way and kind of chop them in. You don't want it perfect. Makes them look a little bushier and a little more fun. That looks great. I traced on the mustache. I decided I better get that in there before I did any more of the beard. A little bit around his face is where uh, the mustache comes up, so I have to go back and touch that up, and I'm just using my radical round and some uh, light buttermilk, and that's the same base coat as we did the entire plaque. I'm erasing any extra tracing lines. Try to keep these to a minimum because all we're doing is adding little light washes of light cinnamon so it won't be enough to cover up it you just want to um, create that shading and that the lines of the beard going around the mustache to scoop it around the outer edge of the mustache and all the way around there my paint is very wet and see how I stay on the chiseled edge. I'm using the toe of the brush to create those lines. It's such a fun way to very quickly create that fullness of the beard without a lot of heavy line work. Just pulling that down and because that float is very thin I'm just kind of dragging the paint down from where I floated it. Just keep pulling it down. Now I didn't go all the way to the bottom and I'll show you. We'll go from the bottom up, but we're put, putting some words in there as well. But I think it's more um, interesting if it's not perfect and solid. And I know it doesn't look very strong on the camera, but I, I have enough light cinnamon in my brush that I can pull it down and it'll, it will create those soft lines. Follow the contour of the beard and just keep pulling those down. You can always go back and add more, so don't try to do so much in the beginning that you just become overwhelmed with all this fussiness. My style of painting is very minimal. Scoop it around in there. I hope you can see how much moisture I have on my brush. It just, I don't want to say it puddles, but it's very movable. There's, there's a fine line between too much and just right. See how I can go back and add more right there? We'll just finish that little part up. Stay on the chisel edge. If you go sideways on the brush, you're going to get flat, heavy strokes. And I often have to rotate just to keep that direction of my brush at an easier position to pull that. Kind of curve that a little bit because it goes out and goes back in. You want to keep that contour. Stay up on that chisel edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. He doesn't spend all his time brushing his beard, so it can be a little bit fun.
those areas that I had to touch up on his mustache where it went up over his face were still very visible. So pay attention to those areas to make sure that it's not going to be a problem later. You don't want to have to go back and try to figure out how to fix it. I went in with my Mono Zero eraser and I just cleaned up some of those excess tracing lines. Just makes it easier. Checking to see if everything's dry. Same thing on the mustache. I'm using my half inch angle, shading around the edges. And once I get the edges defined, it's still very damp. I can go back in. I'm trying to decide direction here. So we'll start there and go down the middle. With the mustache, you have to pay attention to the curve because it, it can get kind of tight. So, But it works well, and you wouldn't think with a half inch angle being a bigger brush, but it does work really well. I'm just shading around the outer edge just to get those defined. And I know I will go back and strengthen them and see where I need to add more. There I'm going around. It's just such a fun way to create a beard and mustache. Make sure to tuck it. There we go. Just kind of following that curve of the mustache. And it's really hard when you're working with a big brush to pull it down and curve it around. So it doesn't have to be long, continuous strokes. You can use short, there we go, in a little bit. There we go. Um, you can use short strokes to, to kind of create that same movement of pulling it all together. See how loose that paint is. Once you start following the movement of the mustache, it's really easy to pull it around. I'm almost using the toe of my angle like a liner brush. And if you want to switch over to a liner, if that's easier, that's fine. I just think I have the brush in my hand. If it'll create that easily, then why not? So I hope you give it a try because it's such a great way to work. Here's another place where the nose wasn't quite round and fit on the mustache well, so I went back and just touched it up. So the whole time you're painting, kind of evaluate what's been painted and if anything needs updated or upgraded while you're, you're working, you can jump around. I was painting the beard, but the nose needed fixed, so. I picked up a little bit of Snow White on my Radical Round. I'm just stroking in some highlights. And that's going to be kind of on that roundy part of the mustache and on the tip. So this is going to brighten up the mustache and you can help define those, uh, the direction of the mustache and bring that brightness in. A little bit down beside his face. I'm going to brighten it all up. And I'm not doing from the hat all the way down. On the beard area, that middle area where the strokes from the bottom going up and the strokes from underneath the mustache going down don't quite meet, this kind of pulls them all together without actually 
there's some very soft lines in there with the light cinnamon but when you add this white in there as kind of a highlight that brings that continuity to the beard these are the small touches that make a big difference and you can just go back and keep adding until you're satisfied with how it looks and remember this is where we're going to be stenciling the words so it won't have to it doesn't have to be just absolutely perfect And we'll just keep working that until it balances out. decided that I needed to add just a little bit of shading along the bottom and the right side of the stars and that just helps to bring that warm uh, shading tone up into the stars helps to balance everything out I'm using my quarter inch angle a little bit of light cinnamon just kind of washing the bottom edge of those stars just that little bit of paint might make such a big difference it's, it always amazes me how much adding just little touches will change something. And because I wanted to brighten it up, I'm picking up a little bit of Snow White. Not really floating it. I'm just kind of using the toe of the quarter inch angle uh, to pull that color in because white on buttermilk is not very uh, strong of a color. Using the toe to just kind of lay it in we'll... adding the lettering is almost the final step and I am just going to take my stencil and position it evenly on the hat brim and secure it with a piece of painters tape always make sure that you secure your stencil I do a very soft uh, swirl with my stencil brush and even that motion can shift your stencil just a little bit very very important if you want clean crisp edges that you take time to stencil slowly not rush it and not create a pile of paint because you want the the edges to stay clean and get that sharp lettering Loading my brush, and I, I can't show you the bristles because it's black on black. It just won't show up. But I want to make sure that I load the brush well. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Load the brush well, but I don't want a lot of drippy paint on the tip of my brush. So I'll just take and gently wipe it over a paper towel. It will remove any excess paint on my brush to start with I'm just going to very lightly have a soft touch if you go down real heavy you could push paint under the stencil just want to see what kind of paint is on my brush it's a little easier if you can actually see the color on the bristles black on black is a little bit of a challenge now I know that I'm pouncing most of the time I swirl but I really have a, a good bit of paint on my brush and I think swirling I could accidentally push some underneath the stencil and get that not crisp edge so I'm just going to gently tap if you pounce too hard again you'll push it under the edge it's always best to do two light coats as opposed to one heavy coat it just makes it easier and I'll show you here in a second my edges aren't 
super clean. I can still see a little bit around the edge, but it's very crisp. So I'm going to let that dry just for a second. Get a little heat dry here. I picked this font. I just thought it was charming. Now I'm going to go back and just gently swirl. I have not reloaded my brush. And I'm swirling in both directions. And that will pretty much ensure that the bristles will hit all those edges and get a nice tight stencil. And if you're not seeing that edge go away, that little bit of white, you can pounce. You can swirl. We do want the lettering to be very opaque. So I am going to take my time just to make sure that I have a really nice coverage. I always go back and do a third coat if it's needed. And lift this up. We should have super clean. Doesn't that look great? And I'm going to take this off, scooch it down, and put America down here on the beard. Just going to eyeball it. I want it about so far from the edge, about up that far up and down. Again, I'm going to make sure that I put oops, my tape there so I don't do that and make it a little off center here. Picking up just a little more paint. I used quite a bit on that last application. Still going to wipe my brush off. Very light touch. Add that on there with a very soft tap. This is such a whimsical, fun font. And when I laid the stencil out, I decided when it came to the eye that I wanted a little eye with a star on it. I thought that would add just a little bit more charm and whims whimsy to this design. You know, sometimes it's the little things that are done that Everybody goes, oh, that's cute. And almost there with the first coat. I'm not gripping my brush very hard. It's, I, I think it's hard on your wrist if you do a lot of stenciling. Give it a quick dry here. It doesn't look bad, but it's a little bit uneven. And I'll just do that swirl back and forth. And you be careful on letters that have a lot of cutouts, like the A. It's a little bit flexible and it can shift. So if you are working in a delicate area, keep that in mind. I don't know that stenciling is faster, but it's much more precise. If you have a difficult time painting letters, or you're not a big fan of painting letters, this is ideal. Oh, look at that. That's so cute. Now, I'm kind of a... Um, kind of like to have these little bridges connected. It just makes it look a little more hand painted. Picking up my Epic Script Liner and a little bit of the Lamp Black paint. And I'm going to put just a small connecting bridge right on there. I think I need a bigger brush. These are a little bit wider. Just go with the My radical round. And I, one reason I love that, it has such a nice little point on it. Adding a little bit of water to my paint to make it a little more fluid. And we'll just go in and 
paint those little bridges in. Take your time, do a good job. Nobody will ever know these are stenciled. I don't have much paint on my brush. That's why it's taking several passes for me to fill that in. Just add that little stroke. Staying on the tip, not pressing down. And can you see what a difference that makes? It just kind of brings it up a notch. There's not a whole lot, um, a couple little places. If you want to take the time to, to, to do that, some people uh, prefer the stenciled look. It's just a matter of personal preference. Either way, it's not hard. I've done these before and I get all finished and I see that I missed like three or four places. I think, how can you miss it? It's that obvious. Oh, that looks great. Now, the only other thing we have left to do would be the side edges. If you happen to get any paint on the side edges, I have a great tip for that. And I think I'm going to be using Payne's Gray just because it has that blue tone to it. And I'm dipping my finger in water and I'm just gonna use my finger the same way I would a paintbrush. I'm gonna load it. Don't overload it. If you get too much paint, you're gonna make a mess. Just going to very gently slide it right along the side of the edge, very gently. You can feel, you don't want too much pressure, but it cleans those edges up so quickly, so perfectly. And this will work up to a quarter inch. After that, you just need to get your brush out and be careful. A light touch. If it takes two coats with your paintbrush, it's gonna take a couple coats with your finger. It's not magic. It's just a really great way to quickly clean those edges up. You don't get it on the front and you don't get it on the back if you don't press really hard. Go slowly. Just because it's easy doesn't mean you have to go fast and lose control. Reload often. Again, no different than a brush. If you're worried about getting paint on your fingers, you've got the wrong hobby. Just very gently slide that. Just a soft, gentle touch and slide. Now, because your finger is shaped the way it is, if you need to get in these little grooves, you may have to go to a brush just to touch those up. But you can look at them. You may not even need it. I can get in there fairly well. This just puts a nice finished touch on the piece. It's great if you're doing a slew of ornaments because it goes quickly and it's so it's such a professional look. See how messy that is? I'm just going to gently rub over that. If it takes two coats with a brush, it's going to take two coats with your finger. I've got a little bit of a roll there. And that cleaned up really nice. Same thing up here. Just a little bit of paint. Just like your liner brush. Once you get it loaded well, it just goes on super easy. And that's how easy that is. Now I did do that just a little bit fast right here I've got just a teeny bit there so I'm just going to take a damp paper towel run it over that edge if there's anywhere that you do happen to notice and another good thing to do is maybe put a, a nice varnish coat on this before you do the uh, lettering 
or before you do the outline. Actually, even before you do the lettering. That way, if there's a problem, you can go back and, and fix it up really quickly. I think we are finished. I think he turned out adorable. Let me see if I can go out just a little bit. Whoops. I always go the wrong direction. Someday I'll get that right. So there we have our patriotic um, God Bless America Uncle Sam. I hope you learned some new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting life a little more fun, a little bit easier, and a lot less stressful. Uh, please check out my other videos on YouTube if you like uh, what you're seeing. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I want to thank you for joining me and hope to see you on our next painting adventure on Create with Chris. Music